Today, let's see if we can get the servo drives all wired up and see if we can get this thing to move for the first time. Let's go. I've got a couple more boxes here from Leadshine. As I mentioned before, Leadshine has sponsored all the servo motors and drives for the project. So thank you to Leadshine. Um, apparently this box my kids opened up while I was gone in China. So let's see what's in here. Looks like all the absolute encoders for the drives. Alright, so it's in there. And for this box. Alright. Cable. And it's like a bunch of boxes of servo drives. Alright, it looks like these are all the 400 watt drives. And this one is the 750 watt drive. Okay. On the last machine, we used the EL8 series drives. This time they sent me EL7 series. Looks like they're pretty much the same size, just the 750 watts is slightly wider. One critical thing I forgot to mention is that I got EtherCAT drives this time, so hopefully wiring these will be way simpler. I also have this LeadShine drive that came with the autofocus head. Uh, this one runs off 24 volts, uh, the rest of these will run off 240 volts. All right, let's figure out how these are gonna fit on the machine. I think we should get these absolute encoders installed on here so we account for them when we're spacing them out in the cabinet. I've moved some wires out of the way and I've marked out lines for the spacing. So let's get these attached. Now for this little drive. We had just enough room. So let's start getting these wired up. I just spent the last hour getting all the 240 volts to all the servo drives and all their ground wire connections back to the ground terminal. So let's power it on here and see if they come on. Cool, so uh, I guess next I need to wire up the this other servo drive to 24 volts. I've got this small drive wired up to 24 volts, so let's see if it powers on. Okay, good. All right, I think we're ready to start running all the cables from the motors to the drives. You can see Lee Chine sent me all the appropriate cables to hook up the motors to the drives. Um, everything is three meter length, except for I requested uh, two sets of five meter length uh, to run all the way back to the rear truck and the Y-axis motors. So let's start getting all these wired up. Let's start right here on the rear chuck, I think. Look at these caps. Okay. I guess let's start running these through the drag chain. cables here in the back and there's some extra length which is good in case I ever decide that I want to try to extend this for longer tube we have a little play here um, I think I'm gonna call this drive the y-axis drive so let's see this should plug in right here and C and 2 and this is gonna get wired up into this plug Okay, cool, those are plugged in. Um, I believe this goes to here, the encoder. All right, now that we're wiring up the motors to the drives, um, that reminds me, I bought a label maker. So let me go ahead and mark and put the names on what all these drives are gonna be so there's no confusion later. I've wrapped up the extra length here and put a couple zip ties on it. 
I'll just tuck it right down here. Somewhere down in there, that'll get enclosed by that panel. All right, let's do the wax axis motor the same way. We're there. Just throw a zip tie on here, maybe. Let's plug this into the Y axis. Come here. Plug this into the absolute encoder battery. And let's wire up this motor. All right, let's do the next one. See if we can wire up this front chuck. Plug these in for the front chuck. Should go right here. All right, that looks good. Let me clean up these wires. Here you can see where I've tucked up all the excess wire from those three motors. I've tried to do back and forth loops this time instead of coils um, on recommendations from a previous video comment. Let's install the x-axis motor cables. This is probably the shortest cable run in history here. We should go right there. All right, this is gonna get plugged in right here. All right, that's wired. Let me clean up these cables. The last one, let's do the Z-axis. This cable's a little bit different because it also has wires uh, for 24 volts to release the brake. Let's see if we can get this in here. All right, let's get these cables routed. You can see I've used some zip ties to make a little loop there. And I'm gonna send them directly up and kind of in the same route as the optical cable and down through that hole. Just gonna go right here. That's everything but the 24 volts to release the brake wires. Uh, let me get this cleaned up. That's looking pretty good. I've got all the main servo drives wired. I've got all my excess wire either tucked down on this side right here, or down over there on that side. Skyfire sent me a bunch of short ethernet cables and a long one and kind of a medium one. So let's figure out uh, how we can get all these drives connected here. So it looks like it goes from the EDM 3000 uh, to the first drive. And that's not quite gonna reach. So let's use this longer cable right here, I think. So this should go down to the first drive. I'll lay that over to the side for now. Then we'll use these short cables to connect uh, between all the different drives here. Um, I'm not sure about this uh, drive for the autofocus head. It has some ethernet connection, so I wonder if that's also an ethercat drive. Um, I'll skip it for now until I take a look at the user manual. I guess we need this one to go back up to the breakout board. Uh, these are too short. These also aren't quite long enough to run between this and the PC. Actually, that might just fit. Let me try replacing this cable right here. Let's see if we can get one of these shorter ones to work. Oh, nice. That is just long enough. All right, good, so we can use this kind of, I don't know what it is, medium length cable to go back from this drive out to the breakout board. Okay, well, that was way simpler than uh, soldering all the connectors for these. Let's uh, see what happens when we power it on. I might have to uh, put in some parameters first to make these work, but uh, we might have movement already. I threw on a couple zip ties to try to clean up these up a little bit. 
Um, I still need to see if this one's uh, Ethernet capable. If so, I have one more cable so we can just patch it over and back up to the controller, which would be awesome. And wow, wow was this way easier than uh, figuring out all the pin connections and soldering up all the connectors for these. That saved me hours of time. I didn't find the user manual yet for this drive, but it does look like it's Ethercat. Let me just use this last cable here. We'll patch over to it. It's right there. We'll connect this one. All right, they're all wired. When I power on the drives, um, they're all coming up with this error and I looked it up and it's a STO error. The STO function is enabled by default. And I just realized in the boxes, it came with these little plugs with some jumper cables to uh, disable it um, until I can get it wired up to an e-stop. So I guess I need to get all these plugged in. It looks like they plug in right here on the top. Let's see what happens now. Okay, that's better. Now that all the servo drives are wired up, let's start up the configuration software again here. Okay, it's pulled up these uh, six different nodes. Um, all of these are the servo drives, and then this one's the controller. Um, I've not set any parameters on the drives yet. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I just wanted to see how it assigns all the drives to the different axes. It looks like it's already just assigned them right here. Um, I can't imagine it would know what they're actually supposed to be, so we'll probably have to unassign all these and then assign them to the correct motor. It looks like all of my lead shine drives were set as virtual axes. I'm not sure why that is. I right clicked on the name here and chose a, a conventional axis for all of them. So I'm gonna save it here and see what happens whenever you start. All right, before we can move anything, I need to disable the emergency stop. That's set to normally close right now, but I don't have anything hooked up. So let's set that to normally open. All right, let's see if we can enable the motors. Oh, I heard them all click on, that's good. Now I wonder if anything will move. I just tested trying to do some movement and it looks like they're all receiving the movement signal but only the first drive is being enabled so I can move the front chuck only. Okay, I think I figured out how to get all the movement working. On my servo drives, I need to set parameter eight, um, the command pulses per revolution to 10,000 on each of these. All right, that's good. The only other thing I've adjusted on here, um, I set the slave ID on each of these to match what was in the Raytools uh, Convig software. Um, so if you can see here, it's parameter 23, and I've set it to 4314 on each of these to match what was in the software. That was it. All right, let's go back in and see if it moves. This is pretty exciting. We have first movement. Pretty cool to see first movements with the machine. Um, I think now we need to fine tune some of the configuration parameters to make sure everything's moving the correct distance um, and direction. And then uh, I need to get all my homing switches all set up so that I can uh, home everything and set up the soft limits. Then I think after that, we can go ahead and get all the servos tuned. So, all right, lots of fun stuff to get to. Next time we'll wire up all the homing switches and set up the homing sequence and finish configuring the parameters for the motors. That way we can go through the tuning process. Um, thank you to Lead Shine for sponsoring these servos and servo drives for the project. And thank you to all my Patreons for making these projects possible. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.